My name is John Edwards. Uh, it's my happy lot to be Vice President for Enrollment and Student Services at the University of Texas Pan American. I want to welcome all of you this morning to this great event. I want to take a moment to thank several student groups that are with us, uh, and you heard from two of them. The, uh, the uh, mariachis under the direction of Frank Laura, the uh, drum line under the direction of Mark Ramirez, the D blazer dance team under the direction of uh, Charlie Casadas, and the cheerleaders under the direction of Alex Gano. Please uh, uh, help us thank you. What a wonderful day to be at UTPA. This is an opening of a new semester, began on Monday, and a great semester beginning for our university. New programs, new students, and a new athletic director. It's always an exciting time to be on a university campus because it fills us sort of with a spirit of renewal. We get to start all over. Maybe we didn't have a good semester. Well, here's a new one. Maybe uh, uh, athletic programs didn't win as many games as last year. Well, here's a new one. Administrators might have new programs out there to help kids that we just haven't thought of yet. And faculty, of course, renew courses, revamp old courses. It's a great time, the beginning of semester. But, it, but here, it's also exciting because we have more students than last fall. We don't know the final count yet, but it looks like we're going to have over 18,000 students, a new high for this university. And even more, and even more exciting, because we have an increase, a substantial increase in graduate students and a substantial increase in entering freshmen. And I want all of you to know that this university set standards, academic standards, uh, about four years ago. And this is our third step in raising standards. And even in this fall semester, when we raised standards and turned away hundreds of students because they did not meet our admission standards, we enrolled more freshmen who were eligible. And the reason I point that out is because I think we need to take the opportunity, every chance we get, about the good job that our schools are doing in the Valley of preparing students better for success at university curriculum, curricula. And I want to thank, take this opportunity to, to thank our schools in the Valley for sending us many, many more well-qualified students. That's important for the Valley and important for South Texas as a whole. And yesterday we had, we received word from the National Golf Coaches Association of America in conjunction with, with the NCAA that our women's golf team has been selected as an outstanding academic team. One of only 45 Division I golf teams across the nation so selected. When you add that these same women golfers won the Great West and the National Minority Golf Tournament, you can see why we're proud of our athletes. They're winners on the, on the links, on the courts, in the fields, and in the classroom. And this, by the way, was the third All-American Academic Team from UTPA that, selected, that, that was selected. The other two were women's volleyball and women's track. So I want, <laughs> I want to thank Coach Lopez, Coach Hubbard, and Coach Hartman for stressing academics as well as on the field competition. And I think that is something that pervades our entire athletic program, and that's the reason we're here. What a wonderful occasion, announcement of a new athletic director for UTPA. We had a great process for selection, uh, for selection of this position, and the process worked to bring to our university the best qualified candidate.
That process included interviews by several groups, the president's executive, executive team, the athletic council, the athletic department, administrative staff and coaches, the student advisory group for athletics, and the enrollment and student services division executive team. All participants provided comments and evaluation sheets. But most importantly, we had organized a search committee which poured over about 20, 25 applications, selected some number for telephone interviews, and focused eventually on four candidates who went through this on-campus interview process. The search committee was very helpful to the end, also during the interview and evaluation portion. I want to thank the committee members, and I would like for them to stand as I call their name, and if you can withhold your applause until the end and we can show uh, proper, proper appreciation. Some of them are already standing. Uh, Mr. Richard Trevino back in the back, co-chair, Dr. Dora Saavedra, associate professor, there she is, in communications department, co-chair, uh, Dr. John Sargent, faculty student, uh, faculty senate representative and fa faculty athletic rep. Mr. Emmanuel Montrana, head coach's representative. Coach Montrana is back there. Dr. Susan Reinders, athletic department staff. Mr. Mark Sines, business affairs and alumni rep. Ms. Elaine Rivera, student financial services in the enrollment and student services division. I thought, I, oh, she's at the back as well. Ms. Jeanette Brochiers, athletic council rep. Ms. Yvette Padilla, university advancement representative. And Ms. Uh, Millie Guerra, uh, EEO coordinator. Students included Ms. Rebecca De Leon, Student Athletic Council. Uh, Mr. Raghu Putaganta, Student Government Association President. He, Raghu should be here. I, he probably has class. Off-campus representatives, and I want to sp especially thank these three gentlemen. Mr. Jim Board, an alum and, and a member of the 1963 NAIA National Basketball Championship team. I know Jim is here somewhere. Uh, Mr. Mike Pettis, an alum and city manager of McAllen. I think I saw a hand raised in the back. Mr. Gus Casas, former student and corporate sponsor and donor uh, of our athletic program of GNS Glass. <clears throat> Let's give all of these folks a great round of applause for their great work that they done. Another reason it's uh, exciting to be here at UTPA is because we've had great leadership during the interim between our former president and the new president. Dr. Charles Sarber is an experienced leader, well-known academician in engineering circles. He served as president of the University of Texas Permian ba Basin and had an interim stint as well as president at the University of Texas at Arlington. Please welcome Dr. Sarber. Thank you, John. On behalf of the UT Pan American faculty, students, and staff, I not only wish you a good morning, but a welcome here to our campus. To help us welcome, in a good South Texas tradition, the newest member of the UTPA team. Of course, we extend that very special welcome to our new athletic director, Chris King, and his wife, Alicia, who is sitting here in the front row, who will be uh, welcome or will be introduced a little more a little later. But there's got to be a good omen in this. They flew in yesterday. And what happened yesterday? It rained. <laughs> what happened this morning? It rained. It rained. There you go. <laughs> You got to know that the only two days of rain that we've had all year. So this is this is particularly important. Today, with this announcement, the stage has been set for the UT Pan American Athletic Department to move forward to continue building a winning program and a winning tradition, not only on the fields and courts, but more importantly in the classroom. And we are confident that we have the right man to lead us to that end. Academics have been and will continue to be the cornerstone of success at UT Pan American. 
and in our athletic department. We must build and promote a competitive program, but it will be one of integrity. One in which GPAs are given as much note and consideration as stats and scores. One that celebrates in the truest sense of the con concept, student athlete. I'm extremely proud to tell you that our student athletes currently hold a cumulative, cumulative 3.1 grade point average. At least that's up from 2.9 last year. And our overall student body is only 2.6. Does that sense something about our athletes? Bronx, please stand. Those of you who are here, all you athletes. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for what you do for your university. And a special thanks to the coaching and athletic staff for keeping student athletes on task. That is a, a major challenge, I know, uh, throughout the year. And for teaching them that winning at life is the most important kind of winning. That's extremely important for them to understand. Mr. King, you have a great group of student athletes now in your charge, and I know you will be proud of them as we are. And the administration is committed to your success and that of the athletics department. We have every confidence that you will make us proud. Again, welcome and good luck. And let me take this opportunity to thank Ricky Vaughn for his service as interim athletic director over the past year. There was a very steep learning curve for Ricky. He got thrown into a situation that uh, uh, not too many people have the pleasure or displeasure of being <laughs> cast. But it included a compliance investigation and it concluded some other things that were not very pleasant. Nevertheless, Ricky, we thank you for your commitment to the program and especially to the student athletes over this past year. Now back. And now I'll pass the program back to Dr. Edwards with just two words. Go Bronx! I uh, said a few words about the uh, process of our interview and selection. Uh, it was not easy because we had outstanding candidates, but when all of the results of campus input were received and evaluated, none had more positive comments than the man we're about to introduce to the community, Mr. Chris King from the University of Alabama and his lovely wife, Alicia. Chris came into the interviews and I would say took them by storm. By the time he got here, he seemed to know more about the athletic program here than those of us who had been here a few years. He knew the personnel, knew the issues, he knew about the Great West Conference, and, it, and had already devised a 90-day plan of action. And when we called his references, we called people at several universities where he served, they had nothing but good things, in fact, great things to say about him, including from his director of athletics at the University of Apple, Athletics, who said, he's the best organized person I have ever known. And if you think he's, he's great, you ought to meet his wife, Alicia. <laughs> Chris King was Associate Athletic Director at the University of Alabama. He served as an assistant to the Director of Athletics in day-to-day -day operations and special pro pro projects. He provided daily oversight and administration for the sports of men's cross country, men's track and field, men's and women's swimming and diving, women's rowing, and women's soccer. Prior to joining the University of Alabama, Mr. King spent nearly four years as an assistant athletic director at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, where he was responsible for developing and administering the compliance and internal operations program for intercollegiate athletics. Mr. King is a 1994 graduate from Robert Morris University with a bachelor's degree in sports management, received his master's degree in educational leadership and supervision from Campbell University in 1997. 
I want to ask at this time for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee President, Sarah Hernandez, to come up to the platform. Sarah is a track athlete, is a junior majoring in communications and journalism with a minor in sociology. She currently holds an impressive GPA of 3.83, and I'll ask Chris King, our new athletic director, to come to the podium and accept a gift from Sarah. Good morning, everybody. This is pretty amazing. Uh, very, very uh, happy about the turnout today. Um, I'd like to start off on behalf of my wife, Alicia, and I. I uh, would like to thank Dr. Sorbor, Dr. Edwards, and the search committee for this wonderful opportunity to become the next athletic director at the University of Texas Pan American. Alicia and I are very excited about moving to the Valley, very excited about the opportunity uh, to become part of the UTPA family, as well as the University Administrative Leadership Team. I'd also like to Thank uh, the co-chairs of the search committee, Richard and Dora, for their service to the search. Uh, I know serving in that role several times myself in the past, I know how much time and effort it takes, and so I want to thank you for that. One other individual I'd like to thank, uh, probably more than anybody, uh, is actually Mark Seitz. Uh, if he did not pick up the telephone uh, and, and ask, engage my interest in this job, I may not be standing here today. So, Mark, thank you very much. for. I would also be remiss not to thank my Bama family back in, in Tuscaloosa for a wonderful experience working with the coaches, the student athletes, and the staff there. Uh, they've helped me prepare to take this next step in my career, and so I'm very thankful for the past seven and a half years I've had at the University of Alabama. At this time, what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce my wife, Alicia. Alicia, if you would stand. And for those of you in the back that can't see, she is seven months pregnant, and so in the next two months we'll have a new lady bronc in the family. So we're very excited about that. Alicia, Alicia was a very important part in this process, uh, making the final selection uh, in regards to accepting this position as the director of athletics. She's from South Florida, and she's got two requirements when we look for jobs. One is the next job had to have palm trees. And the second was it had to have retail. And when I told her it had the largest outlet mall in the country, it sealed the deal and we were <laughs> coming, to, coming to McAllen, Edinburgh, Texas. This position became attractive to me for a number of reasons. One was the strong university administrative leadership in Dr. Sorber and Dr. Edwards. Dr. Edwards had a, a lot of time to spend together on the campus visit. Was very, very impressed with his vision. Had a, had a lot to say about the new era in athletics mentality in regards to a lot of new coaching hires. Uh, and so his vision uh, was a big reason uh, as far as me being attractive for this position. Another important part was the what I would call the structure and accountability. Uh, that's very important to me. A lot of my experience has been on the internal side of athletics. And I understand becoming a new athletic director, a lot of my responsibilities are going to have to be on the external side. And we've got a very, very experienced uh, senior internal staff. And for a first time athletic director, knowing that we have those administrators in place in areas of academics, compliance, student services, and the business office uh, was, was very strong uh, in the final decision making for myself. I was very impressed with the strong academics and the academic support system for our student athletes. I always uh, follow the student athlete first concept. That's very, very important to me. Uh, I was very impressed the day of the visit. Uh, I know that Dora, she, she brought to my attention. I know Dr. Sorbor and Dr. Edwards did as well, how they were very proud of the Forbes article that came out that listed the university as number 32 out of 100 in the uh, public institutions in the country. And so I thought that was a great honor for the institution. And it says a lot about the academic support program of this university. And then lastly was the coaching hires. I was very impressed with the cohesiveness, the oneness of the coaching staff. Um, everybody that I had met throughout the day, everything everyone had to say about the new coaches that were coming in. And so, you know, that's part of the team and the, and the UTPA athletic department family. And, and you don't see that a lot of times in athletics. You don't see the cohesiveness of the coaching staffs. And so I think that's very, very important. And it was very important in my final decision to become the director of athletics here. During the campus visit, as Dr. Edwards alluded, I did provide a 90-day plan uh, in regards to you know, what we were going to do, what we were going to concentrate in the first 90 days with me in the athletic director's role. 
I also uh, produced some initial uh, short-term and long-term goals for this department and initiatives and also provided a plan as far as a template to utilize to look at a comprehensive review of our external operations areas. And so that's going to be a big part of what we do in the first 90 to days to potentially the first six months. The first 30 days, and I'm going to talk to the athletic department staff here right after the press conference, we're going to take a look at our immediate needs, our intermediate needs as far as from one to three years, and then looking at putting in a long-term strategic plan for this department. We'll take a look at the review of the staffing and the, and the hierarchy and the, and the structure of the department. And a big part of what I want to do is I want to develop relationships. I want to be able to have relationships not only in this community, but also within the state. I think it's very important for us to, to, to branch out and reach out to our alumni and our former letter winners, those that are supporting us uh, for, the, for the, the long term, as well as for those that, that maybe have fallen uh, aside through the years. And so we need to really build that community. And so that's something that we'll take a look at uh, in my first uh, six months here in the job. As I indicated, after we do a, a pretty comprehensive assessment and review of the program, we will put in a long-term strategic plan. We're going to take a look at our existing mission statement. We're going to look at creating a vision statement, core values, and guiding principles for our athletic department. Some of the major goals that we're going to take a look at, of course, is academics, competitive excellence, take a look at facilities. Uh, we want to take a look at our commitment to compliance, not only just in the NCAA rules, but also Title IX, gender equity, and diversity initiatives. You know, public relations, and that's just to name a few. I think it's very important that we have guiding principles for a department. And every department that I've ever worked in, we've kind of had the same certain principles that we followed. Number one is going to be we're going to have a strong commitment to compliance. I think that's very, very important. Uh, you know, a big part of my background and my experience uh, has been with NCA compliance. And, you know, I don't ever want to see an institution getting themselves in any type of trouble uh, with the NCA, particularly because of what it does, it tarnishes the reputation of the institution and you know, it makes things difficult when you're trying to raise money and, and different uh, initiatives like that. And so commitment to compliance is gonna be very, very important to our athletic department. Another uh, principle we will follow is we'll have a balance between academics and athletics. Um, we're gonna make sure that we have a student athlete first concept in every initiative that we put in place. Uh, we are gonna have um, uh, we will have an aggressive public relations and a fundraising plan. I talked a little bit about that. I think it's very important that we take a look currently at our initiatives in regards to our ticket sales, our Bronx Athletic Foundation memberships, uh, as well as sponsorships. You know, that for us to provide a world-class athletic and academic experience for our student athletes, we've got to have resources, we've got to generate revenue. So we'll take a strong look at our existing revenue streams as well as creating new revenue streams. Again, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for being here today. Alicia and I are very excited about moving to the community. We're looking forward to being a part of the university uh, leadership team. I look forward to meeting everybody in the room and listening to any suggestions, opinions, or ideas that you have for our athletic department. I appreciate your support of UTP Athletics, and I look forward to meeting each of you. Dr. Edwards has indicated to me that um, I will remain available after the press conference for any additional questions you may have uh, from the media members. And before we go, and the last thing I'm gonna do, and the first, well, actually the first thing I'm gonna do in the athletic director's role is remind everybody we do have a volleyball game tonight, Angela. <laughs> it is the, uh, it is the Battle of the Orange. So I will have my orange tie on tonight. And uh, we play uh, UT Brownsville in a match starting at seven o'clock. There is a pregame picnic for all students and student athletes, and I will be in attendance, and I look forward to meeting all of our uh, student athletes. Thank you. my job in this next step I, I'm supposed to remind the media that uh, he is available for interviews after the uh, press conference I want to thank the members of the media for coming out uh, to this important occasion and I want to thank all of you 
for coming out to this important occasion. I, I would be remiss if I did not mention that this was all put together by three ladies, uh, Rebecca Sweat, Sally Mendiola, and Linda Lopez, and I would like to show them our thanks for that. You know, you know, the last time uh, that I suggested that we were about to enter the golden age of intercollegiate athletics at UT Penn Am, I want you to know, those of you who are young, that we had a golden age uh, with basketball under coach Sam Williams and with uh, baseball under coach Al Ogletree. And coach Al is with us today and we want to thank him very much for all that he's done for our university. <laughs> And, and Coach Al is our baseball coach emeritus, a well-earned position. I also want to uh, thank uh, Dr. Fred Farias, who works with our ba uh, Brock Athletic Foundation, for being here today and for all of the support that he gives. Part of the uh, part of the reason that I believe we're entering into a new and wonderful era is because we've hired coaches who understand, first of all, playing by the rules. They understand NCAA compliance issue. But most importantly, as we've already demonstrated, they understand that we are dealing with student athletes. It's important to win on the fields and on the courts and on the links but they understand that it's more important to, yo to mold young men and women in their charge to become graduates and leaders and success stories. And I want to add as a debt of thanks to the person who led us in this interim because he made some tough decisions. He made them, he stood stoically while criticism was heaped upon them, but he pulled together an administrative staff and hired the wonderful coaching staff that will take us to new heights. And again, I want to thank Ricky Vaughn publicly, who helped open the door to the bright future for UTPA athletics. We have a wonderful opportunity to pull behind our new leader, support his vision for our Bronx. Alums and supporters, we need your help today more than ever before. And you're going to be proud to stand up and be counted as a Bronx backer. Because in the trail forged by our athletic programs, we're going to find fulfilled dreams, successful students, and winning athletes. The next question, the new question around town is going to be, how about them Bronx? Thank you very much. <laughs>